Hey YouTube world, what's going on? Mark here from TST Industries back in the garage. And beside me, I have a 2023 Honda XR150L. On any motorcycle, when you are switching to LED signals from the stock signals, you may experience some weird symptoms. Common ones are your signals flash quickly. They may flash once and stay on. They may not flash at all. That is due to the difference in current being drawn from the stock lights compared to LEDs. Now on this model, it is a two part problem. So once we install our LED flasher relay, you will see that the signals will flash, but we will experience a symptom where all of the signals are flashing together and some weird stuff is happening on the dash with the signal light. We will correct that by installing our diode mod harness. This is a plug and play kit, and this will prevent the lights from all flashing at once. You will ensure that all of your functions on the dash are functioning properly and you'll be safe and ready to ride. So let's go ahead and jump right in. As I said, we're gonna focus on this area here with the OEM relay and swapping to our LED flasher relay. Now, we are going to be removing this rear panel. This is all one panel. We have a push pin here and a push pin here, and the only bolt that is located and that we are removing is right here. That is why I had mentioned it's either gonna be a 10 millimeter socket or a flathead. You can see it's set up for both. I have a 10 mil socket here. So we're gonna go ahead and remove it. And you can see here the bolt has a machined notch in it for a flathead. Otherwise it's just a 10 mil. Now we're going to gently lift up on the front portion of this panel. You can see it's freed itself. And then we're going to remove the rear section and then gently slide down, releasing this face from interfering with the seat. Toss that panel to the side, and here we are. The OEM relay is this Mitsubo one located towards the rearmost section of this area. We're going to disconnect it from the OEM harness, and then we're going to slide up on the relay if this will cooperate with me, we'll actually push forward, releasing the rubber from this post. And then we will slide down with the relay off of the bike. We are going to want to reuse this rubber. Now we will grab our TST relay. Let's go ahead and... If you have a small flathead available or a small pick style tool, we're going to just gently pry up on the tab located on the relay, on our relay. And then we will go ahead and let's see. We will slip this over. You can see just like that, we want the open end on the back side of the relay. This will allow us to slide it back on that OEM post. And then we're going to connect the relay just like that. Let's go ahead and test our work now that that's secure. Now we're gonna test our work. I should mention we still have the stock lights on the rear, so the symptom may not present itself, but it can if you're using different turn signals or if you are or have already swapped out your rear signals. But let's go ahead, activate the signals. You can see here that they are flashing at the correct rate. We are seeing a full sequence of the sequential function and we're pretty happy. But as I mentioned, this is a two part problem. Right now it is not presenting itself because we have not set up the conditions in which it would. And those conditions are met by installing LED signals on the rear or some other aftermarket front turn signals that draw even less current. So let's go ahead, perform the diode mod installation. Before we do that, let's button this area up, put that panel back on and make sure we're nice and protected. Reinstalling this, you want to first slide up and then you can see here, we have a post located on the front and one on the rear and those respectively push into those mating holes. So we're going to slide up gently, ensuring that we clear the seat, line that post up. Now on the rear one, there's a small tab located on the rear of this panel. It needs to slide under the tail light panel. 
So we're going to go ahead and ensure that that happens. That's nice and tight. And we will reinstall the bolt that we removed here. Once you bottom it out, just go ahead and give it a nice eighth of a turn, sixteenth of a turn, just to make sure it's seated properly. And now we can go ahead and move on over to the front headlight area. Now, moving on over to the headlight, we do need to remove four bolts that are securing the headlight in place. You can see one right here. And if you watch our front turn signal installation video, you will note that the second one is located underneath it behind this wire loom, but it's sitting on a post that's kind of hidden. We're going to use our five millimeter hex key, Allen key T handle, remove the bolts. And we're going to repeat those steps on the opposite side. And just like that, we can now remove the OEM headlight. And if you watch our front turn signal video, you will know that there is a post located on this side that we need to clear. So I will gently pull out on this side and simultaneously pull out on the brake lever side, freeing the headlight from the post, and then we will disconnect the headlight. And there we are. This is the post I was referring to that the headlight does sit on. It can create problems if you are not prepared. Now with our diode mod in hand, we can install this product. We're going to be focusing on this black connector located closest to the clutch lever right underneath the dash and it's held in place currently. So what we're going to do is press down on this tab and I'll illustrate that here in hand, but you're going to press down on this tab, freeing it from the locking tab, which is located on the opposite end. There you are. And if we snake this out of its captive, mounting piece. You can see here, that's the tab. Our diode mod harness mimics this with OEM connectors in a different color. So what we're going to do is put that connector back in place and connect accordingly. If you hear a click, that means the locking tab is engaged properly. There we are. And just like that, this installation is complete. We can now go ahead and reinstall the headlight, making sure when we are reinstalling this, we clear this post and we have the bottom bracket sitting on this bracket on the lower triple. So what I'm going to do is this mounting grommet needs to slide over this post. I'm going to start from the brake lever side, feeding it over and then kind of pivoting this, the headlight onto the rest. Let's go ahead and connect our headlight. It only connects one way, so you don't have to worry too much. Make sure it's seated fully. And now hopping on over to this side of the bike, I'm going to first clear that post. There we are. Make sure the bottom bracket lined up correctly. And then the very last step is making sure that that tab slides over. Once we're bottomed out, give it another eighth of a turn, ensuring that we are seated fully. repeating those steps on the opposite end. And just like that, this installation is now complete. So if you found this video helpful, if you enjoyed the installation process, you wanna see more content from us or more content on the XR150L, be sure to give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Don't forget to check out our website, tstindustries.com. The link to these products can be found in the description below or you can just visit our website to check what other bikes we have supported 
and what other products we are offering for any bike that you can find in your garage. And lastly, don't forget to stop by our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all username TST Industries. For now, this has been Mark in the TST Garage, and we'll catch you next time.